Starship is fully stacked and ready for liftoff. With both stages of the Super Heavy rocket now in place, we're just hours away from another major Starship launch. For us, it's shaping up to be another epic show. But what does this flight really mean for SpaceX, the Starship program, and their biggest partner, NASA? Here's what the final mission of Starship Version 2 is all about. SpaceX is aiming for Monday, October 13th, 2025, to launch Flight 11, with the launch window opening at 6.15 p.m. Central Time. As always with spaceflight, timing can change. It is rocket science, after all. But for now, things are looking solid and on track. This will be the fifth full-scale test of Starship Version 2, and, if everything goes to plan, the last one before SpaceX debuts the upgraded Version 3 in early 2026. That rollout, however, depends heavily on how this flight performs. While the overall mission is similar to past flights, Flight 11 includes several notable changes. For only the second time ever, SpaceX will launch a super heavy booster that's already flown on a previous test. In fact, 24 of the 33 Raptor engines on board have also been used before, a growing sign that SpaceX is gaining confidence in reusability. This flight will also mark the third consecutive test where the booster won't return to the launch site. Instead, it will splash down in the Gulf, allowing SpaceX to push the rocket's performance envelope without the constraints of a precise landing. One of the biggest upgrades this time is the way the Super Heavy booster will land. Instead of jumping straight from a 13-engine ignition to a 3-engine final burn, as seen in previous flights, this test introduces a new landing sequence. The booster will start its descent with 13 engines, then shift to 5 during a new divert phase to fine-tune its trajectory and finally transition to 3 center engines for the final landing burn. SpaceX says this new approach should offer more redundancy and smoother control, especially in case of any unexpected engine shutdowns during descent. There's also a change in how Starship itself returns. To better simulate future missions that will land back at Starbase, SpaceX has added what it calls a dynamic banking maneuver near the end of the flight. This will test updated guidance algorithms during subsonic flight, just before splashdown, which this time will take place in the Indian Ocean. So while Flight 11 might look routine on the surface, it's packed with meaningful firsts, seconds, and thirds, each one nudging Starship closer to becoming a fully reusable launch system, ready for the next generation. Just a few days ago, the FAA posted NOTAMs, those airspace notices for pilots, covering parts of the Bahamas, Cuba, and even French Guiana, all areas along Starship's projected flight path. Throughout the week, more NOTAMs popped up, including ones for the Mexican Launch Corridor and the Indian Ocean Reentry and Splashdown Zones. What's interesting this time around is that the landing hazard area for Flight 11 is actually smaller than in previous flights. That's part of a broader effort by SpaceX and its government partners to reduce the overall impact of these launches, not just for Starship, but for Falcon as well. They mentioned this a few weeks ago in an update, pointing out that as Starship launches ramp up, it'll be more and more important to limit disruptions to air travel and reduce how long airspace and maritime areas have to stay closed. It's a step in the right direction, and definitely something the FAA will be happy to see. Starship Flight 11 is set to officially close the chapter on the Block 2 era, a phase that's had more than its fair share of bumps along the way. The first couple of flights didn't go as planned. Both ended in explosions not long after Starship separated from its Super Heavy booster. But things started looking up with the last launch on August 26th, which felt like a real comeback moment for SpaceX. During that flight, Starship separated from the booster about three minutes in and continued on a suborbital path. It hit a couple of big milestones, deploying eight mock Starlink satellites and reigniting one of its Raptor engines in space, only the second time that's ever been done. That engine relight is key for future missions that need to return vehicles back to Earth. About an hour into the mission, Starship re-entered Earth's atmosphere over the Indian Ocean and pulled off a controlled vertical landing on the water west of Australia, before ending the journey with a dramatic fireball. As for the Super Heavy booster, it wrapped up its own set of in-flight tests and made a planned splashdown off the coast of Texas. Another chapter is coming to a close at Starbase. After Flight 11, the original orbital launch mount, OLM-1, will officially be retired. 
With SpaceX moving to the upgraded version of Starship, the old pad just isn't compatible anymore. The quick disconnects, QD, and hold-down system were designed for a different era of hardware, and the changes are already underway. If you've been keeping an eye on things, you might have noticed the booster stabilizers. Those big arms under the chopsticks that help guide and catch the booster are gone. Classic SpaceX, always a few steps ahead. Since Flight 11 won't include a catch, they're already starting to dismantle parts of the pad before the rocket even lifts off. At Starbase, every minute counts. So, does that mean the entire launch tower is coming down too? Not necessarily. While the exact plans aren't public yet, there's talk that SpaceX will keep the tower but modify it to fit future needs. It sounds like just the pad infrastructure, the stool, will be removed. Honestly, it's about time. The stool served its purpose, but it's good news that it's making way for something better. Now, let's take a step back and appreciate the wild journey of this pad. Back in July 2021, SpaceX placed the bare launch mount ring onto six freshly built legs. A bold move, especially since most rockets use mobile transporters instead. Not long after, they stacked Booster 4 on top, marking the first ever booster stacked on the mount at Starbase. That booster? It was stacked once, then rolled to the rocket garden, and eventually scrapped three years later. Later that year, in November 2021, the OLM came to life, its first vents activated, likely tied to the 20 Outer Raptor engine quick disconnects. From there, it was game on. After the first test flight of Starship left a crater under the pad, SpaceX installed a water-cooled steel plate with a powerful deluge system to protect the infrastructure. That upgrade took time, needing approval from the FAA and Fish and Wildlife Service, but it worked, and it changed the game. Since then, OLM-1 has supported 10 full Starship launches. But that's not all. After Ship 36 exploded during a test, SpaceX engineers pulled off a bold move. They repurposed a transport ring into an adapter that could support static fire tests right on the launch pad. That clever hack paid off, allowing the last two Block 2 ships to run static fires with minimal downtime. In total, OLM-1 supported 10 different boosters, a test tank, and two ships. Over the past four years, it's been through it all. Stacking, venting, launches, explosions, upgrades, and through it all, it's helped push the Starship program to where it is today. Was it perfect? Was it final? Not even close. But it was absolutely essential. A real workhorse. A battle-tested platform that made way for the future. So as we say goodbye to this piece of Starbase history, let's give it the send-off it deserves. Type it with us. You did well, OLM-1. Still not sure exactly how SpaceX plans to rebuild the pad, but it'll probably involve something similar to Pad B's flame trench setup. They're using what's called an integrated flame trench, a pretty standard feature for launch pads around the world. Basically, it's like a giant reinforced concrete bathtub. The walls are lined with concrete-filled stainless steel, and the floors covered in stainless steel cladding, all designed to handle the intense heat and force from launches. This particular setup might end up being one of the most reinforced flame trenches ever built, which makes sense given how often they plan to launch Starship in the future. Right in the middle of the trench, directly under the launch mount, there's a unique feature, a double-sided flame diverter known as a flame bucket. It's seriously cooled with water and designed to split and redirect the rocket's exhaust. Where the two halves of the flame bucket meet, there's also a water-cooled ridge to handle the worst of the blast. It's the first design of its kind and should go a long way toward making the pad more durable, especially as SpaceX ramps up the Starship launch rate. And finally, let's talk about what Starship Flight 11 could mean for SpaceX's biggest partner and customer, NASA. If this flight goes as planned, it'll mark another key milestone on the long road to putting humans back on the moon through the Artemis program, for which NASA has chosen Starship's lunar variant as the human landing system. Just like with Starship's broader goals, the lunar version needs a high launch cadence to enable in-orbit refueling, a crucial part of making moon missions sustainable. One major focus right now is getting the heat shield on the upper stage to perform reliably. That's why SpaceX has been ramping up testing, even covering the ship's flaps in heat shield tiles. Every improvement here feeds directly into making Lunar Starship a viable lander for astronauts. Looking ahead, the next big questions are how quickly SpaceX can refurbish and reuse Starships, build out more operational launch pads, and start delivering payloads to orbit regularly. Eventually, Starships will need to dock with each other in space and transfer cryogenic fuel, a capability that's essential to fully tank up a Lunar Starship for a round trip to the Moon. 
Lori Glaze, who leads key Artemis efforts at NASA, put it clearly. There's no doubt that the human landing system is on the critical path for Artemis 3. The pacing item is the rate at which SpaceX can launch the systems that can fuel the depot, so that it's prepared to fuel Starship for a lunar landing. So the real key there is them being able to get to a rate where they can launch at a rapid enough cadence. Last year, NASA conducted an internal review on SpaceX's lunar starship readiness and estimated a 70% chance that Artemis 3 could launch by February 2028. But the even bigger picture is Artemis 4. For this next crewed landing, NASA is counting on an upgraded version of Lunar Starship. If that mission succeeds, it would mark a huge leap forward. SLS will be flying its more powerful Block 1B variant, increasing payload capacity to lunar orbit by 10,000 kilograms. Astronauts will make their first visit to the Gateway Station in lunar orbit, and the upgraded Starship lander will support month-long surface missions, far longer than Artemis 3's 6.5-day stay. From there, Artemis 5 will bring Blue Origin's Blue Moon lander into the mix, alongside Starship, setting up a flexible architecture that NASA hopes to keep using as it builds toward a permanent moon base. So yes, the timeline might shift, it usually does in spaceflight, but getting Artemis 4 and 5 right, including Starship's role, is far more important than hitting an arbitrary launch date. We've waited decades for a return to the moon, and just as long for a fully reusable launch system. A few more years is a small price to pay for getting it right. The good news is, Starship seems to be heading in the right direction again. All the early failures we saw earlier this year weren't setbacks, they were learning moments. SpaceX has gone through each issue, made design tweaks, and updated their systems. That's the kind of iterative engineering they're known for, and it's what makes them so resilient. The next flight will be incredibly important. If it's successful, it'll show that SpaceX now has a much stronger handle on how to make Starship safer, more reliable, and more capable, both for lunar missions and beyond. So, good luck Starship, and good luck SpaceX. We'll all be watching closely. This next flight could mark a major turning point, and it's going to be exciting to see what happens next.